So I recently finished an old journal and I do what I normally do. I got a new one out of the closet, put it on the bookshelf, ready to write in it the next morning, and then I didn't touch it. After a few weeks, I finally worked up the courage to ask myself, dude, what are you waiting for? And the answer completely changed my life. So this is the notebook that I finished. It's been to Paris, Slovenia. I took it on all my cruise ship gigs to Aruba, the Bahamas, Grand Cayman. Basically, any place the Beach Boys would sing about or where an oligarch would hide their money. But when I got this new one, I couldn't bring myself to open it up. Every morning, I'd walk by the bookshelf and experience this overwhelming sense of shame. You know that friend who called you four months ago and you still haven't called back? Partially because you've been busy, but also because you can't really deal with the embarrassment of having to apologize for such a long delay. It's like that, but worse. By the way, Jim, I'm thinking of you, and I know I owe you a call. I started thinking about why I hadn't written in it sooner, because I was scared I might somehow screw it up on the first page. I realized I was suffering from perfectionism, although saying you're suffering from perfectionism is a bit of an exaggeration. There's no patient getting test results, like... Is it? Perfectionism? No, it's just cancer. Now there are three main side effects of perfectionism. Freezing up, not starting, and never finishing. So I did improv in high school. I know, even back then I was a player. In improv, there's no time to second guess. You've gotta take all the other voices in your head and you tell them to start digging and then you murder them. When you jump into a scene, if those voices aren't laying face down in a shallow grave somewhere, they're gonna keep freezing you up. I have so many ideas in my notes app for jokes and YouTube videos that have never even started because I'm so focused on how not perfect they'll be. Perfectionism is the main reason this channel doesn't have more videos. Like I want every video to be a banger, but by having such unrealistic expectations, I never end up starting. I've had so many other projects I've started and never finished because I just kept tweaking and tweaking and not finishing. Now, sometimes that's great. I mean, maybe the world doesn't need another video on how to make caramelized onions. Now, Philip Stanhope, the fourth Earl of Chesterfield, wrote, whatever is worth doing at all is worth doing well. Now, he didn't say perfect. He said well, and there's a difference. Perfect is just an idea, or better yet, an ideal. It's a direction. It's like up. You can go up, but you can never really get to up. Now, there are ways to push past perfectionism. Here are my top three. In Walter Isaacson's biography of Steve Jobs, he writes it as the launch of the original Macintosh neared. The team building it began to push back, and Jobs reminded them, hey guys, real art is shit. Just like that. If you spend endless hours perfecting it, you risk missing deadlines. When Whiff and I were writing Emergency Contact, there were tons of times I wanted to ask for an extension, but we didn't, and I think it came out pretty damn good. Now, were there typos? Sure. Did it get rave reviews? Oh yeah. You can also remind yourself how unimportant whatever you're doing really is. Will this video matter in one year, five years, tomorrow? This is my journal. Who cares if a few lines are crossed out or if words are misspelled? No one else is gonna be reading it except my biographer. Walter, call me. Armed with my newly found courage to push past perfectionism, I opened up my new journal and I saw that Lauren had already ripped out a few pages, like the animal she is. She'd already desecrated it, so it would never be perfect anyway. What did I have to lose now? I felt completely free to write my first entry. Call Jim.